Welcome to segment five, what makes a team, teams and teamwork in healthcare. In the last segment, we heard about some of the changes in the healthcare landscape that are moving us towards increased interprofessional collaboration. In this segment, we're gonna focus on what makes a team. We'll provide you with a framework for thinking about how members of different professions work together. And we'll discuss some of the barriers and facilitators of interprofessional collaboration. There are many different types of teams in healthcare, ranging from a resuscitation team in the hospital, to a surgical team in the operating room, to a primary care team in an outpatient clinic. There are a number of key features of teams described in the literature. Teams have a shared identity and shared goals or purpose. They have shared responsibility for achieving these goals. Team membership is defined, but may change over time. And this is perhaps one of the most difficult things in healthcare because team membership does often change over time and members must be able to work together to achieve goals despite these changes. Members of a team are interdependent upon each other and each team member's contributions are required in order to reach the team's goals. And finally, teams generally have the authority to act and make decisions autonomously in order to be able to carry out their tasks. One example of a team would be the team that works together in the Acute Care for Elders Unit at San Francisco General Hospital. Let's hear from Dr. Edgar Pierluisi, the medical director of the ACE unit at San Francisco General Hospital, about the ACE team goals and the team membership. The goal of the ACE team is to return hospitalized older adults back home after the hospitalization. We do that by trying to maintain physical function during the hospital stay and to avoid many of the complications that older adults face. Well, the center of the ACE team is the bedside nurse. Our goal is to make sure that they are, um, have as much knowledge as they need to get about the patient, as well as to make sure they have a good plan of care for the day. They're, they're supported by uh, occupational therapists, a nutritionist, a pharmacist, a social worker, a clinical nurse specialist, and a physician. What about interprofessional work that doesn't occur in teams? Although there's a movement towards more team-based care, there are countless interactions between healthcare providers from different professions that don't occur in teams, as we defined earlier in this segment. In his book on interprofessional teamwork in healthcare, Scott Reeves presents a framework for thinking about how healthcare professionals work together. In this framework, he describes several looser forms of interprofessional work where members have less of a shared identity and integration of members is less important. These include collaboration and coordination, as you see on this slide. This diagram depicts the differing forms of interprofessional interaction to convey the level of connection that each requires. Teamwork is at the center because it requires a high degree of coordination amongst members, whereas collaboration and coordination require less, less connection. In collaboration, there's shared accountability and some interdependence, but team goals and roles and team tasks may be a little more unpredictable and less well-defined. Shared identity among members is less important. An example of interprofessional collaboration would be individuals taking care of a patient in a large general medicine ward. There are nurses, pharmacists, physicians, physical therapists, and social workers who work together and communicate about patient care in the course of their day, but they don't necessarily have a strong team identity. Um, there's some interdependence in their functioning in order to care for these patients. Um, but aside from an interprofessional weekly team meeting, there's limited interaction. In coordination, healthcare professionals work together, but integration and interdependence are much less important. Providers function independently for the most part, working in parallel. Team tasks are less urgent, they're less complex, and they're more predictable. Coordination does require some shared accountability between healthcare professionals and some clarity of roles, tasks, and goals. In, an example of coordination would be a sports medicine practice comprised of physicians, nurses, and physicians assistants who work with a physical therapy group in the same building. 
Although there's some degree of communication that occurs between the sports medicine providers and the physical therapy group, they are for the most part working in parallel and they only communicate when the need arises. Now that we've discussed some of the different forms of interprofessional work, from teamwork to collaboration to coordination, let's focus on some of the barriers and facilitators to interprofessional collaboration. We've discussed some of the driving forces moving us towards interprofessional collaboration. You can see them uh, here in this diagram. We talked about patient characteristics, shared competency between the professions, some of the efficiencies that can uh, occur when we work together uh, collaboratively, and then finally some of the uh, policy issues that are driving us more towards a collaborative practice. What are some of the barriers or restraining forces? Well, despite an increasing focus on interprofessional education, many healthcare professionals lack those critical skills in communication and teamwork that are necessary for us to be able to collaborate effectively. Um, we also train our healthcare professionals in silos, and each profession has its own values and perspectives. Although these varied perspectives are helpful and add a richness uh, to collaboration, they do pose a barrier as well. Um, some of the existing infrastructures um, in our system including schedules, um, lack of time for team meeting, lack of rewards for collaboration, can uh, be barriers to collaboration. And finally, existing reimbursement structures don't always foster interprofessional collaboration. Some of the key learning points in this segment um, interprofessional work takes a number of different forms ranging from teamwork to collaboration uh, and coordination. Teamwork is a more tightly coordinated um, process and it requires a high degree of connection and a shared identity amongst team members. And then finally we touched on some of the important barriers and facilitators to interprofessional collaboration. What types of interprofessional work have you observed in your own setting, and how would you characterize this work? Is it teamwork? Is it collaboration? Is it coordination? Um, and why would you characterize it as such? I look forward to hearing from you um, in the discussion forum.